This episode is brought to you by Muntins Malts, a company that is passionate about providing premium malts to brewers worldwide. For over a century, Muntins has been a leading supplier of brewing and distilling malts, offering the finest British malted barley on the market. You can experience the difference Muntins offers by joining a recipe receiving tier of our Trub Club because every kit that ships out now includes premium Muntins malt. You know, we've known the Muntins crew for a long time, and I can tell you, friend, you're going to love brewing with their grains. Ask your local supply shop to carry Muntins malts, or homebrewers can join our Trub Club at homebrewhappyhour.com forward slash club, be a part of the community, and come brew with us. Thank you, Muntins, for supporting our efforts and homebrewers worldwide. Today's show is brought to you by HopsDirect.com. Grown in the esteemed Yakima Valley on the Pewterball family farm, HopsDirect.com offers the widest variety of hops available online at incredibly competitive pricing. It's simple. They grow hops, they sell hops, and they ship hops straight from their family-owned farm to your doorstep. Producing the highest quality hops is HopsDirect.com's passion, and they're proud to be an independent grower in the craft beer industry. Go to HopsDirect.com right now and get what you need to make your brew day better. That's HopsDirect.com. Today's show is brought to you by Imperial Yeast. You hear us gushing over Imperial Yeast all the time, and that's because their yeast performs for us in every batch that we brew. Imperial Yeast is adored by commercial breweries and home brewers alike. Their pitch right pouches are jam-packed with over 200 billion fresh yeast cells guaranteed to deliver flawless, fast fermentations every time. Imperial yeast strains are grown by a team of pro brewers and home brewers who live to help other brewers learn more and ferment better. Join any recipe receiving tier of our Trub Club and get a free upgrade to premium Imperial yeast with every recipe kit that ships out to you. Learn more at homebrewhappyhour.com forward slash club and come brew with us. Entertaining shows with content that spreads information and sparks discourse throughout the community. This is the Pearl Media Network. Pressure fermenting an alt beer, dry hopping a pressure fermented batch, and adding a sight glass to an existing brewing system. This is Homebrew Happy Hour, episode 404. All right, I'm going to see if I can get this. Hey, we're on the screen, Mr. Carlson. Hello, and well, I'll be trying this out. I don't, I don't have all the great equipment with me, and uh, you know, what I did bring that could be bad. But either way, welcome to the Homebrew Happy Hour. This is the show where we supply the answer to your homebrewing questions and discuss all things related to craft beer. And if you, my friend, have a question you'd like us to discuss on a future episode, get to the homebrewhappyhour.com. You could email Joshua at homebrewhappyhour.com. But even better, call it at the 325-305-6107. And when I use your voicemail question, you could be back perfectly question. When I use it on a future episode, you get yourself a $25 gift card to catconnection.com. I'm one of your hosts, Joshua Steven, joined as always by the director of operations at cinfected.com, Mr. James Carlson. My friend, welcome yeah, to Denver. Yeah, long drive. Well, a helm yeah. and you wouldn't let me drive. I mean, I didn't really try hard, but you were like, you, you had the helm. It was great. Yeah, I was pretended cool. to work in the passenger seat for a little bit. It was good. I'd show you all the view. Actually, the view of this room is not terrible. I see a Colorado University building. Yeah. I see a cool like 1940s looking building. Yeah, the mountains in the background. Oh, there are some mountains. Yeah. In the background. Oh, look the uh, what's their football field called? Uh, in a course field. Is it, the, don't get me uh, lying, dude. We're not from here. Yeah. We're not from these parts, <laughs> as uh, people who hear us talk can tell you. There, that that speech impediment. Where where are you from, sir? Hey, hey, hey. Um, nobody ever asked me that. Nobody's ever <laughs> asked you where you're from. <laughs> Yeah, that that is one of my favorite stories of all time. Where the uh, we were in line at the Smithsonian mm-hmm. Natural History Museum. We were walking in. Yeah, it was a couple and, behind and us. You and I were talking. I'm going to turn this just a little. You and I were talking, and uh, the people you're good right there. And the people were like, uh, "Hey, where are you from?" And I thought they were asking us. And so I started answering, and that jerk guy stops me. He goes, "Not you." And then he looks at you and goes, where are you from? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
like, well, okay, sir, what are you, a fight? What are we doing here? <laughs> Anyway, uh, we do welcome you to the show. We are doing, oh, they gave us a battery warning. We're going to make this show quick. We we were going to do a preview show in the car, but then, you know, the equipment and stuff wasn't working great. But also we realized, we're going to do a recap episode after this on yeah. the drive home. So we're doing a proper episode for you guys for this week here uh, in the hotel room at the Curtis and beautiful downtown Denver, Colorado. Yeah, literally the convention hall's right there. It's so great. Todd hooked us up. Sorry you couldn't be here, boss. Not that sorry, but sorry you couldn't be here. We had a great breakfast this morning. It's great. It was a, like a pretty solid road trip. I'm excited. Last night was technically night one for Homebridge HQ. We got in too late. Yeah. Also, didn't want to pay the thirty bucks for. I think it was thirty for club night. You had yeah. to pay extra. The lady at the front when we got our thing said, "Oh, you're you wouldn't have gotten tickets for it anyway, oh, like for okay. our media badges." Which my mic is falling. I'll fix that. But look, guys, we are officially more important than you. Look at these media. <laughs> <laughs> the media badge says so. James, how <laughs> dare you? Um, before I get into the meat and potato of the shows, because we do have three great questions, I do have a little bit of small talk to get through. Let me see. What's, uh, what does this one do on the screen? Oh, well, I, I could do there. Trump Club members, we are so excited to tell you this month at patreon.com forward slash homebrew happy hour, join a recipe receiving tier and get the incredible celebration that's a Sierra Nevada Christmas beer. And we call it the Hoppy Holiday Ale Clone. That's going to be. That's going to be this? solid, dude. That, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, I don't know how many years have we been doing the? Well, we've been doing all Christmas beer for three of the five years of, of Trump Club. And we've switched back. This is the earliest we've done it because one time we did it in November and we realized it'd be better to do it October so that they have all that time to let it condition, you know. Yeah, there's a lot going on. There's a lot so, going on. And, yeah. and I ship at the end of the month. So really, these people are going to be brewing in November, mm -hmm. and that's going to be perfect. Thanksgiving, it'll be ready, but it'll be perfect at Christmas. Yes, the temperature will be right, too. It's, it's going to be so good. So uh, that's up on the screen again. Thank you to our sponsors, Muntins, HopsDirect.com, and, of course, Imperial Yeast for always supporting the things we're doing. We could not do this without y'all. And if you want to brew this as well, Patreon.com forward slash homebrew happy or join a recipe receiving tier, get this incredible kit. And like James said, there's a lot going on. It is what it, this one is of the a, harder kits to put together. It, it's, it's a cool. lot of ingredients. It's a lot of hops. It's a lot. It, if you were to do the retail value, you'd realize it is a bargain for getting this when you join the truck. Definitely. Huge bargain. So and I don't that, know if y'all have noticed lately, but the price of kits, homebrew kits have really gone up. Way up. Yeah. Way up. Yeah. Which is a shame because it, I, mean, I don't want it driving homebrewers away. No, of course we don't. And that's why we haven't. I'm not going to say 2025. I, I, I don't think we're going to change our prices, but we have to. Our sponsors help us determine the the tiers yeah. uh, of this stuff. And, and it, it is a reality that stuff is skyrocketing, specifically shipping. Well, and that's another thing, you know, with the with the, the last port strike, then they oh, yeah. used to deal that basically gave them a lot of money. 50% yeah, pay rate. Or 60, yeah. Can't help but think that's going to trickle down into everything else. Hear, hear me out. Do you want to? Unify and strike against Todd. Do you, you want to do that? We, I'll, I'll do it. He would just laugh us all. He would. Him and he, would he would actually. He would we fight. don't have that kind of pull here. <laughs> I don't have any pull. I don't have any hair. I don't have any pull. And I hate this angle. God, I realize I have a double chin. Oh, no. Anyways, yeah, back to the show. Uh, so, yeah, Trump Club, patreon.com forward slash Oprah Happy Hour. That means Brew Day Live is coming up. In fact, it's coming up in one week. My pop and I are going to brew that delicious Sierra Nevada celebration hoppy holiday ale clone on Friday, October 18th, 2024 at 10 a.m. Central. You can join all the fun right here at youtube.com forward slash homebrew happy hour. And I say that as if our audience is mostly at YouTube. They're not for the podcast. <laughs> so, not. Yeah, that's a small fraction. A, a tiny bit. Yeah. It, it, we've had sponsors before kind of uh, chastise me like your numbers are bad. I was like, let me show you the audio only numbers, you yeah. jerk. Well, that's uh, how it started. That was the original. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Most people consider I would even venture to say, I know Rogan gets ungodly numbers on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I bet you the majority of people are still audio for him, Spotify, oh, because you're you're driving. Oh, you're, that, you're, but the YouTube's such a saturated media. So it's, saturated. It's so hard to get a foot in. It is. It is not. Listen to our excuses. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's why we don't make any money, Dad. Exactly. Uh, so, uh, Brew Day Live, don't miss it out. That's totally free. You don't got to be in the Chub Club. You just have to go over to YouTube.com 
forward slash homebrew happy hour at 10 a.m. Central on Friday, October the 18th. And uh, let me pull up my notes because I think, James, that's all the small talk yep. I have. You, uh, I didn't have a good way of letting you hear them, but you have the questions in front I of do, you. I do, yeah. I'm so looking we, at got, right now. we do have three fantastic questions. Let me get you. Oh, you don't get to hear the gong. A <laughs> question. You don't know what you're missing out on. I'm missing anything on that. So, with the gong of truth playing, we have three great questions. Our first one, it's a voicemail. Our buddy Lance from Ozona. Hey, Josh. It's Lance from Ozona, Texas. Hey, man. First first off, I love the brew day live with you and your dad. Keep it up. Don't stop. And to Todd, tell him I love the idea of no plastic on the shirts. But anyway, my question is, probably for James, what do you think about me pressure fermenting the Dusseldorf alt beer? Anyway, I'm going to do it. I've already entered. And but I would love to hear his feedback on this. So if y'all could let me know, I watch every episode. I haven't missed one. I've been, you know, been doing it from day one, listening to y'all and love it. As long as y'all keep it up, I'm going to keep listening and watching. Anyway, keep up the good work. All three of you. You're awesome. Bye. Lance, thank you so much for the question. Thank you for the kind words. Brew Day Live with my pop is one of my favorite things to do. I'd love to do that for a living. There's no money in brewing. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, before I give my input on pressure fermenting and alt, you pressure ferment every batch. Yeah, I haven't I haven't uh, done normal fermenting in almost three years it's now. It's been a long time. Yeah. So uh, you haven't brewed an alt in a while, though. Yeah, the, but the last alt I did brew was pressure fermented. Oh, see, yeah. then there you go. So tell me your thoughts on pressure fermenting, specifically the alt, and how that batch turned out for you. That turned out fine. I thought so. Uh, yeah. the, 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 here's the thing is when you pressure ferment, you know, it, it keeps everything in check. And so it develops naturally a cleaner fermentation. That's why you can do a lager as much as an ale at room temperature under pressure. The alt beer is kind of a hybrid. You know, it's 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 an ale yeast, but it's typically on the cooler side of fermentation. But the one thing about alt beer that I've noticed is I've made them quick, quick turnaround, but an alt beer really likes to mature. So it, the, the pressure fermentation is fine in my experience. It's the conditioning that makes all the difference in the world. So if you do a four week conditioning. After you know post fermentation, when you've got beer and you're you're letting it lager, um, and then you compare that to like a six to eight week, there's a huge difference. Huge difference. Yeah, and it's it, and it all has to do with the roasted malts. The roasted malts really like to mature out. And in, in my all beer, and probably everybody that brews all beer, I do three hop additions. I do a fifteen thirty, and then I I, I do a sixty thirty and a fifteen. I don't dry hop an alt beer. Layers use spalter hops and only spalter hops. Over time, all of that kind of conditions together the, with the roasted malts, and it really changes the full character and flavor of alt beer. So don't worry about the pressure fermentation. I haven't had any issues with it. The biggest issue is just conditioning it. And if you have the time, go full eight weeks. You'll, you'll, you'll appreciate it. I agree, and I, I'll add to it. I'll elaborate just a little. There we go. No, I don't need to get this figured out. Um, I would like to add to that that my dad and I we did an all beer with Chuck Club, and we uh, pressure fermented it. And the first keg of it, we didn't give it time before we tapped into it. It, it was, was good. The a little color, green though. It was a little green, but the in the color it was a little cloudy too. Mm -hmm. The color wasn't quite there. I mean, it was there, but I mean it was a, it wasn't a clear beer yeah. and all that. The second keg of it, when we did tap into it, I think I texted you guys that. Yeah. I was like, dude, we nailed it. Like, yeah. it, and it was all time. It was, it was a time thing. It was, um, if I just allowing it to mature, mm -hmm. cool condition, that is a style. Those hybrid ales that, Absolutely. It, like, time, a like Kolsch too. We, we had a keg of Kolsch that 
the second keg of it, we didn't get to it for four or five months. Mm. Best quilt ever. Yeah. I mean, it was phenomenal. Yeah. And, and all because of time. Like, we're so quick by we. I mean me. <laughs> so quick to want to get into that beer. And oh my gosh, it's so good. We'll have to do it now. But well, that isn't that always the ultimate goal? I don't know about you guys, but quick turnaround and a good beer. Shoot you. Yeah. Shoot you. Yeah. That's the dream. Whale. That's the dream. Um, the white whale. You know, when you have a good, healthy yeast like Imperial Yeast provides in our truck plug, can, can, you all need to understand that when we, when we have the kits ready, we're waiting for that yeast to come in. So you're not getting it any fresher. So literally, yeah, I mean, it it's is the freshest that same thing day do. we get it, yeah. put it in, in ice packs and put it in the boxes and ship it exactly. out. Exactly. So you're getting a really fresh product. And as long as you have a good numbers with a good product like that, you're going to have quick fermentation and uh, just give it time, let it mellow out and condition and, and you'll be, you'll appreciate the difference in taste. Yeah. But I mean, I've done, we did a five-day coal show or a seven-day coal seven day, show. Yeah, yeah. And it was good. It was and super it, and good. With the yeast that we used. Yeah. Uh, that, what was the, I never can't uh, think of it. Kaiser. The, no, 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 no. The coal yeast. Dieter. Yeah, Kaiser's alt. Dieter's coal. It's highly flucculent. So what does that mean? It clumps together and falls out. Yeah. And it goes dormant. So then you don't have a lot of the real true German yeast strains are really powdery. So you have to do really long conditioning times for them to go bright, or you have to use extensive filtration. And we're talking half a micron to get it bright. Um, it didn't seem to be that bad. No, you know, it no, was no, no. It was fairly clear for a week oh, beer. For, oh, for a seven-day beer, because that's what he means by week. It wasn't a week beer, but it was by, like, as a no, W-E-A-K. No, no, W-E-A-K, W-E-A-K. <laughs> but but so. the seven-day beer, it was more clear than you would think it would have been. And it was yes. more of an experiment than anything. We just can wanted we to see, it? is it possible yep. with fresh yeast and, and fresh ingredients, can you brew a beer on a Friday, let it condition and fer- or let it ferment out over the weekend, and it's finished on Monday. Yep. Cold crash it that day, pressure ferment it, and then it was actually naturally conditioned and kegged on a Friday. Yeah. And and we tried it, and yes, it was a little cloudy, really? but I was surprised at how clear it was given it was really raw beer. But that same beer, if you put it up away, in your back of your kegerator and not tap it, just let it sit there for, you know, six weeks. Yeah. And you have, and you taste the difference. It's, oh, well, there's a dude, big difference. It would have been, it would have been. And I agree completely. Sorry if it was, but I'm on, I understand. I'm, I'm the most, you want to get into it in the world. Well, you know? I brewed this great batch. I want to taste it. And, yeah. and it's not inherently bad to go early. It's just, you may not experience the full potential of that batch yeah. if you don't have the time. But, but the, the gist of, of, for Lance asking pressure ferment in the alt beer is, is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, in our anecdotal experience, uh, the, Brew time is what I think we are blatantly saying is the most important factor. The conditioning time. The conditioning, thank you. The conditioning time is the most important factor of how that batch is going to turn out, pressure fermented or not. Yeah. Like, you let that thing cold crash for as long as you can before bottling it. And that I reminds me, I didn't have a slide on my laptop for some reason. Alt Pull Call is coming up in two weeks. Thank you, Lance, for entering. I'm super excited. Uh, Unfortunately, we had people drop out. Right now, we're at 20, which is fine but not all 20 have confirmed their shipping. So if we're under 20, I might try to make it a one day thing. Yeah. I might try to, and not, not because we don't have the time for it, but because we can yeah. do a one day thing. And for the most part, people want to know as That's what as I'm possible. saying. Exactly. And, and I know I would if yeah. I enter. And, and I'm, so. I'm going to throw some ideas, but with you and, and Todd about uh, how to do it. If it was a one day, I'll just spoil it. I'll just throw it here. Now you don't have to react to one or the other. Mm-hmm. We do a uh, judges individual. We're all doing it together. Mm-hmm. And then and let's say it's 20 of them. Then the top 10 for the last one, we just do a, a heads up, like all of us tasting it until we decide a consensus yeah. of number one. I think yeah. that'd be cool. Yeah, I think that'd be cool. Yeah. It'd be it'll be lively conversation. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Todd, especially. Todd, if I would say if I let him know before he says which one he likes, which one I like, guarantee he might bet. I don't think that one. No, I don't think that one. So mm-hmm. it, it'll make for fun conversation. Todd and I might get our wrestling rematch. We'll see. <laughs> we, but we might just do scorecards for both rounds. We're gonna see. I'm throwing ideas up because this is the first time that we've had we had up so we had 33 initially. And then we had, like, right within the first couple of weeks, seven drop out. Mm. And then we had another three. And it's like, oh, geez. Okay. This is, it's not yeah. bad. But, but I did tell people before, a lot, all the people who did pay, you still get your shirts. 
And that's because I can't refund you because I spent your money on shirts. So, <laughs> yeah, so if you don't ship, yeah, if you don't ship a spear, that's fine. But you're not getting a refund because I'm shipping you a shirt. Yeah, uh, I already ordered it. But uh, anyways, all pro calls coming up. Lance, best of luck to you. I can't wait to try your alt beer. And uh, knowing that it was pressurized, we it's an anonymous testing, so tasting. So it's not like you're gonna go. This tastes of pressure fermented. Was that Lance's? Yeah. But it will be interesting to see if we can. After the fact, knowing that Lance's was pressurized, hey, okay, interesting. To give even better feedback to him after the competition. Sure. I was like, hey, here's how your batch turned out for us. And yada, yada, yada. But anyways, thank you so much. And yeah, Lance is an OG. He's been a longtime Chug Club oh, member. Thank you, Lance. We appreciate you. Ozona, I know I think I drive through it on my way to Big Bend. Isn't that West Texas? Uh, I'm, I'm, I've heard of the town. I right? don't yeah. really know. It's so hard to keep up with Texas geography. When yeah, people are so like, big. oh, I'm from so-and-so. Okay. <laughs> anyways lance thank you so much for your question moving on to question number two and the gong of truth it's that text message from our buddy darren and darren wrote yo josh what does james do when he wants to dry hop a pressure fermented pilsner lol let's laugh out loud for you boomers <laughs> yes i know he doesn't dry hop but help me out because i want to pressure ferment but i also want to dry hop James, you've dry hopped in yeah. the past, but have you ever dry hopped a pressure? Uh, yeah, that's... Because that's all you've been brewing for a yeah, while? I did a, uh, a experimental dry hop pills. I don't remember that. Yeah, I was... Uh, I want to say it was a couple of years ago. And I'll tell you how I did it. I was concerned about the hops possibly oxidizing sure. or pour it in. Now, keep in mind, when you open that fermenter, you got to depressurize it and you open it up. It's got a blanket of CO2 sitting on top of the beer. What I did it was something as super simple. I just took a Ziploc bag and put the amount of dry hop pellets in the bag, opened one side of it, and I squirted a little, pursed it with a little CO2. And then I then poured those into the fermenter. Uh, and probably does make a, make a bit of difference, but it made me feel better about, well, if I purge it with CO2 and then in that Ziploc bag, pour the hop pellets into the fermenter, it made me feel like I was doing something that's all that better. matters. You know, and and, and there, I'm sure there's probably some people, and please comment if you if you do it a different way. But that was the only way that made sense in my head to to dry hop when you're pressure fermenting. But it doesn't matter. You just gotta you just gotta take the gas off, purge it, and I put the hop pellets in a Ziploc bag, squirt a little, eject a little CO2 in it, and then turn right around and pour those into the fermenter, clamp everything back up, seal it up. Put the gas back on it and you're done. Um, the cool thing about our fermenter, it's got a conical bottom. Most of them do. Those dry hop pellets after, uh, I think I tr typically shoot for five days before I keg. Mm. And then those, typically most of it will go down into the cone mm -hmm. and, and settle down in the bottom. But sometimes if they don't, you may want to invest in like a one micron or a half a micron. And half a micron filters are expensive. They are. Right. So you yeah. go by uh, Amazon and get the, we talked about this before, uh, we still need to do a video on that. I, we have to redo it. Yeah, a yeah. 10 by 2 inch water filter. And then I think you can get one micron filters. If you buy like a, a, a box of them, you can get them as low as a dollar a piece. And then uh, sometimes it'll take a while if there's a lot of tube in there coming through. And I don't know. I'm not familiar. Yeah. Huh. It, but just be patient. Uh, there's been times in the past where I've had to cycle the filters out. It's a pain in the butt. If you don't mind that, well, then you can just let it settle out and transfer again to another keg till it's clear. But that's my recommendation. And, you know, like I said, somebody in the comments section that does it differently, please listen yeah. to Jonathan. Absolutely. If you want to post how what you do. <laughs> no, so, oh, hey, I know you're not being funny, but it is funny because that's the first person I thought. Well, he's the one that showed me how to do like, it. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's as far as I'm concerned. Another he's Baruch a pressure, Minute. Yeah. He's a pressure king. I think he owes us a Baruch Minute anyways. And he brews pretty damn good beer. So. He does brew pretty damn good beer. So, he, he, is a, he is a reigning... Wait, it was Kolsch Cup this year, right? That he won? I okay, a Kolsch Cup champ. Yeah. I can't keep up with all these winners. Yeah. I, he entered the old poker hall. Um, oh, man, I got to make sure Wes remembers the dates, by the way. That reminds yeah. me. Because so, uh, we need a fourth judge. <laughs> um, I say that, maybe we don't. But you, you, I like that you answer my question, but I just want to reiterate uh, or the question I was going to formulate. What would you do with certain vessels? But you, the, the process is the same yeah, regardless of a, the vessel. It's per, still a per, pressure per, of vessels. Exactly. So. Yeah, it's... Uh, 
because you're like um, the firmzilla has the big mouth. Yep, you're gonna have to literally purge it off the purge valve. It's a valve that looks just like a corny keg valve. Yeah, and then take the lid off and pop it open, yeah. and then pour it in that way and put everything back together and repressurize. The, their devices like hop bombs and stuff mm -hmm. are with though you still have to depressurize. But that hop bombs, my understanding on whether it's on the CF15 or you get one that's yeah. for Firmzilla. Now they, this they is, you guys on it, haven't right? heard about this. This is a cool product. Basically, what it is is it's a chamber that fits on a tri clamp. Yeah, and you you can connect. CO2, you put the hot pellets in it right. and it has a valve and it it, it pressurizes, it purges the oxygen out of that chamber where the hops are and then you just open a valve. Isn't that wild? And, yeah. Now, I have never priced them, so I, I don't want to. I don't want to make a comment on they're too expensive or not. No. It, but that kind of gadget, gimmick or worth it if you're a serious home brewer, serious in air quotes for audio. I can yeah, no, that, that you would can be, justify it. You can justify it, but I think a Ziploc bag works. You're right. That's what, yeah, good, yeah. You know, it's yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, We're checking <laughs> MacGyver or something like that together. They make uh, like uh, one of those standard inch and a half tri clamp fittings. Yes. Huh? And then you can get one of those that are threaded and then just go to the hardware store and find, you can even use like a simple PVC valve and then uh, just a fabricate a piece of PVC pipe with a screw on top. Yeah. And then you would have to have some way of injecting the CO2 in it and then opening the valve. But that's probably more than most people want to mess with. You Wait, know, Ziploc bag. What was the... The thought behind a dry hop pills was to add some more aroma to it. Yeah, just some aromatics and flavor. What to was it. the was it still spalt? No, I'd actually done. I want to say that was. I'm I think it was tradition. I okay, I knew. Hops. I knowing you and knowing you're doing a German pills, I assumed it would be a, a noble hop. But I do want to do it with the. Uh, I haven't done the lemon drop pills pressure fermented. You haven't. And oh, you haven't brewed that in a long time. So I'll do. I think. I think maybe I might brew that this Friday. I haven't brewed in a while. Well, uh, and I'll next do Friday. Another. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. We're in the yeah, yeah, no right. I don't next Friday, thing. I'll do a pressure uh, fermented lemon drop pills. And then I'll do the Ziploc bag dry hop with it and see how I know Todd's works. brewed it since then. Please tell me you've brewed the lemon drop since that disastrous whole brew con. No, we don't. We've brewed it multiple okay. times. Okay, okay, because it's such a good badge. Yeah. That, that was, uh, yeah, we sold the story before. We don't have to do it again. But I was so heartbroken because day one, it went so fast, I didn't get to have any. Yeah. Like your your first tag of it, we, literally, it was the first beer that was uh, that we floated. Yeah. For, uh, that, the, your All I remember is looking over the cooler. And the line of people exactly so it, all yeah. the way around to another aisle. Yeah, it was amazing. It was, it was amazing. Really I cool. think Todd has that photo. I need to get it from him because he stepped back. Because I was serving. I was trying to. We we were a tri, uh, tri angle booth of Brewers Friend. Right? Wasn't that that year? Yeah, yeah it was that's Brewers exactly Friend, right. Homebrew Supply, and yeah. Cat Connection. See him Becker. And we had two. We had three or four beers. We had four tap. on tap. And your, like I said, day one lemon drop pills went within, I, I don't want to exaggerate, but I think the show floor was open for four hours. I want to say yours went within 90 minutes. Yeah. And then the mosaic one was one of the second ones to go. I think Joe brewed that. And then the ESB. The ESB blasted. And then was the all beer or Kolsch? It wasn't Kolsch. It was either all beer or something else. It wasn't well, Kolsch. I don't remember. Okay. But either way, yeah. one of them lasted for, for a day and a half. Uh, but the second day, uh, rest in peace. Uh, poor, <laughs> yeah. poor lemon job. Anyways, uh, wrapping up Darren's question, um, or just to reiterate what James said, if you're watching at youtube.com forward slash homebrew happy hour, leave us a comment with dry hopping, pressurized, how you do it. Even if it's just to say, uh, yeah, James, exactly how you described it is what I do. It helps us with the algorithm. Hit that like button, share the video, subscribe to the channel, bell notification. I think I nailed everything. Yeah. You and yeah. I watch YouTube so much, you'd think I'd have that figured out. Well, at least he didn't say smash. Oh, That's smash the life of her. In the God of truth, smash her. <laughs> a reminder, because I forgot to earlier, if you text your question to 325-305-6407, and I use it on a future episode, you get a $15 gift card. $15 off an order. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. You think, not bad, but better. Call it in to 325-305. 305-6107. Leave a voicemail question because I'm desperate. I'll play it on a future episode. You'll get yourself a $25 gift card like our third and final question of this special episode. It's our buddy Ed from Oklahoma. Hey guys, Ed here. Now from Oklahoma. Used to be from Texas. 
Love you guys. Love the show. Always throwing out great content. Question is, I haven't brewed in about 10 months due to some family issues, but I'm wanting to get back at it. I've got a 10-gallon converted keg three-vessel system, and I'm trying to get a sight glass on there because I can't remember exactly where 10-gallon or 5-gallons are for water on my mash tun or on my actual boil kettle. What do you recommend for setting that up? Uh, bonus question, should I replace all the seals or just test them and make sure that they hold water? Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Josh, you're doing awesome. The fans know how to get their questions on the show. First off, the voicemail, that's, uh, that's, that's step one. Yeah. But, but two, the flattering. Josh, you're doing awesome. Dad, you can leave that in the comments, too, at some point in my life, okay? But getting on to uh, Ed's question, uh, let us know where you were from in Texas. We drove to Oklahoma. No offense. Not a great highway. No. Not a great <laughs> highway where we, I don't know, I don't. we weren't on 35 anymore, but wherever it was in the panhandle, not that great. It was pretty terrible. I'm sure the state's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyways, uh, his question. So I'm assuming these are all... 15.9 gallon or whatever they are. What, yeah. what was the standard? 16 gallon. 16 gallon, case. right? Same yeah. okay. So we call them kegels mm -hmm. when they get converted. I love taking this question because my dad and I, I, I tasked him with coming up with how to add a sight glass to the mash and boil because uh, I've always wanted to have one on there mm -hmm. because when we're sparging, I want to see where we're at so we can just flow rate and all that stuff with, because I have it up way high because it's for Adam. Sure. Uh, I could always do a pop and have it lower and look, but that's stupid. Uh, I don't know if the principle is the same. To, speaking of MacGyver, you are our internal MacGyver yeah. at the show. How would you add a side glass to a stainless steel uh, kegel if you were going to add one or is the effort futile because of the potential spots for contamination. No, uh, I actually looked online. More beer sells side glasses. Like conversion kits? Mm -hmm. So and they have and it's all about the height. So you want to get it down as low as possible. You'll have to drill a hole in the keg and you can either drill a hole small enough and then tap it. And then because those kits through more beer, great, great company to deal with. They're uh, probably pipe threads, and they may be machine threads and utilize as an O-ring or some type of seal, so you don't have to do that. So you you want to go to go morebeer.com and look up side class. You can also go to Amazon. Or I'll put it in the it. show notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll put and, one in the show notes. And so the way it just all depends on how they want you to mount it and where they want you to mount it. But yeah, I, I actually homemade side classes on Big Bertha. I didn't know that. Yeah, so I just went to the hardware store, and then I went online and bought some medical-grade glass tubes. And that fit, I want to say they were three eighths. That could handle all fittings. the temperature range. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I used a rubber grommet instead of a brass collet for the fitting. And, you know, I had to deal with some leaking issues. Sure. I think in hindsight, I probably wouldn't do that again on a big berth of system like that. We were doing, you know, 40 gallons of beer at a time. And uh, I, w I had it mainly for, it was a gravity flow system. So we had it on the HLT and then we had a cooler. So it was bas basically a batch spark. System. It was, yeah, yeah. And then we had the Blingman, uh, 50 gallon Blingman bull kettle with a 3, 300,000 BT burner. And it was at the very bottom. So it just would gravity flow all the way into the bull kettle. That's a pretty uh, serious setup. Yeah. And, and I did the side class because it was so high up. It was probably five foot off the ground. Yeah. I mean, you'd have to use a ladder and walk up and see where you were. I'd put graduations inside, the, but I used a big aluminum stock pot for the HLT. Yeah. All you got to do is pull water yeah. in it yeah, a okay. couple times, and it'll oxide a layer on yeah. the inside, and it's not a problem yeah. using it. You had to use a ladder? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, so the rest there. of us had to use freaking scaffolding? <laughs> so it is possible to do it, but uh, do your homework before you drill any holes because you want to make sure that you can uh, you can put that in there and no leaks. Well, and that was my concern, uh, my only concern. My, my dad hasn't done it yet because the mash, mash and boil is at my house. We only use it for heating up our sparge water. But I was only concerned, like, ah, I know it's just sparge water. So even if it had, like, because I didn't know, you just have to weld it. You're just going to drill and, and plug, basically, yeah. right? That, yeah, you just you just drill a hole. It comes with a 90-degree fitting. And then on the end of that 90-degree fitting, a comp some type of compression fitting for okay. the glass okay. tube. You can't use plastic, unfortunately. Well, I couldn't in our case because we had so much heat generating and coming out around the kettle. It would have just melted it to pieces. Uh, so that's why I used a, a pretty high-grade glass tube. 
you can also put a little little ball in there too. And then you have to mark the graduations. The way I did it is I would take a gallon of water at a time and empty the HLT and I would just pour it in until I got a reading and counted that and marked it on the tube and then continued. Uh, and it took a while, but it was accurate. You can do it however you want to. That's how I did it, yeah. and it seemed to work out fine. But uh, every now and then, I used in the aluminum. I, I tapped the aluminum. It was fairly thick, and I used pipe threads. So every now and then, I would have to take the assembly apart and uh, re-thread tape it to keep it, because sometimes it would seep a little water out. Oh, okay. But the commercial dip to uh, side glasses, they have all that covered. Yeah, that's perfect. So, yeah, James will get me the link as I'm editing the show. I'll put it in the show notes. And uh, yeah, more beer or Amazon. Uh, yeah. yeah, really, all you got to do is just go to Google and yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. kettle site, brew kettle site glass. Yeah. And no, all you got to do is go to the description. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, like I said, Todd, it's funny. We we love the audience, but a lot of times Todd will make the comment like, "Why don't these people just use Google?" Like they ask our questions, like because that's not how show business works. They like, <laughs> and also because I give them your money. That's why they answer, ask questions for the show. Uh, and it's certainly nothing else. Now, we, uh, we do actually just sincerely appreciate our community. Uh, back to his question. So no hygiene concerns from you with these kits. You just follow the instructions, bada bing, bada boom. Like, yeah, you know, I got, mean, but by the time the, you're heating up the water, it's, it's sanitizing sanitizing itself. It's sanitizing itself. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what, you probably want to initially wash it out with soap and water because it might have some production yeah, right. What does it do? Yeah, okay, yeah. But for the most part, it, you know, by the time it's heated up and the water's hit the tube, then it's it's a non-issue. So, and then he, the other part of his question, which should probably be uh, pretty quick, he has a brood in, you know, I'll round up, about a year. Mm -hmm. If you leave your equipment uh, dormant for a year, are you replacing things on that equipment? I don't see the need to. No. You just, just test it. Do do water. Run water yeah, through those ball valves have Teflon cups and a, and a stainless steel ball with a hole in it. Yeah. That ball rotates and opens the hole through the pathway of the fitting. And th those seals are pretty solid. I was going to say, yeah. a, year, a, a year of not using it doesn't... I mean, especially if it wasn't in some wild roller coaster storage unit uh, like a temperature not controlled temperature rather storage unit yeah. uh I, i'm sure those gaskets are fine no, but it, it doesn't matter i mean i think you're fine you're right you yeah, gotta be it's not, they're case, not using rubber you, inside you run there. water through it and you'll know you're not yeah. fine and then whatever but but do a dry run with tap water and and just make sure everything turn all the pumps on and exactly. just put it like you're brewing something yeah. and and i would even go so far as heat it up yeah I, that, uh, so because heat temperature can affect if it leaks i don't let our system sit dormant and i the night before or early the morning of do a just running water through making sure the pumps work and getting any residual stuff out of our uh counter pressure cooler out the pump mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying all that with tap water let it all the way drain out and then start adding my actual uh ro water um I, and I'll just say our treated water. I'd be lying. I did. I did tell someone in the Trub Club last Blue Day Live. I might add a pack of Topo Chico to the next batch, just to say I did. No, just to say I did them. You know what? I may do that. I may treat the water on the on the next batch. Yeah, like Topo Chico. There you go, dude. It's it's a good batch. I mean, yeah. it's gonna make it. It's a good foundation for sparkling water. Why wouldn't it be a good foundation for? I can't wait for that lemon drop. Do you have the hops you need, or do I need to call uh, Matt? Uh, no, Hopster? we'll check okay. Monday. If not, I'll order some from. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah you let me know because I'm I'm about to put in an order for the next year's uh the first three batches of uh January, February, March. No, Just, I he didn't always ship them. We, our, the hops, all of our suppliers, I will say this, give us their ingredients as fresh as they can, but I have to order or, or reserve is the real term as far in advance as possible, especially with hops, because mm -hmm. that's all contingent on on hop on um it makes a huge yield difference on, on the crop, they are. crop yeah. production. They, they, but also some of these are like, uh, for conversation's sake, Galaxy, we actually didn't make good crop this year or whatever. Sorry, we can't get up to you. Here's the substitute. Because yeah. the worst part... Or here's the 2021. Yeah, exactly, crop, exactly. Yeah. I mean, the worst case is for me to tell people, here's what your recipe includes, then bait the order, and then be told, oh, actually, I lied. It's not spalt. It's middle fruit, which, again, a lot of people be like, oh, that's fine. Yeah, but I, 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 but I just don't want, I like to have it accurate, like knowing what we're going to send out before yeah. I publish the recipe kit and all that. Um, if you use the grain father, all of our recipes for sure are on our public profile there. And I do add them to Brew Brewer's Friend when Todd reminds me. If you ever want to see the kits for brewing, yeah. someone messaged me, hey, can I pay you for the recipe? Like if I join like the $10, $15 tier, can you at least send me the PDFs? Brother, 
they're free. Yeah. yeah. yeah <laughs> you don't free. have to pay for our recipes. You don't have to pay for our recipes. Me, a lot of them are at Homebrew Happy Hour, but the most majority are all at Brewer's Friend. You can either look up Cat Connection because Todd 100% puts them all in on his profile. I don't, you use his profile or you use your own? I am own. Okay. Yeah. Is it Texas Deerhead or what would it be? Uh, we'll figure I'll put it in the show notes. But yeah. uh, between Cat Connection or searching Homebrew Happy Hour, You'll find them all. Or email me or text 325-305-6107. Give me your email. I'll send you the PDF anytime. They're free, my friends. We we do appreciate your financial support, but the recipes are free. You know, got to, the, not now the kits, that's one thing. You got to pay for that. Give me that cheddar. But, uh, but for the PDFs, my friend, I will send them to you. So anyways, Ed, thank you so much for submitting that third and final question of the show. Mr. Carlson, I know I ran us through him super quick, but that is all I got for this week. I sincerely appreciate your time. I can't wait. It, right now, local time is about 11.30 a.m. I'm going to get this uh, episode published um, go, or edited, then published. Then we're going to go party at HomebrewCon <laughs> or Homebrew HQ. We're going to film some great content tonight. I don't have any interviews lined up, but we'll get some good filming. I think tonight we're going to be doing the search for the best alt beer no. at Great America Beer Festival. So youtube.com forward slash homebrew happy hour. Subscribe to the channel to see our Great American Beer Festival content. James, let's go party. All right. See you guys. And that will do it for this episode of the Homebrew Happy Hour. If you have a question you'd like us to discuss on a future episode, you could go to homebrewhappyhour.com or even better, call it in to 325 305 6107 and get yourself a $25 gift card to kegconnection.com. They do to our show sponsors like Munton's Malt. Premium grains for a better brew day. If you aren't already brewing with Munton's, give them a try by joining our trout club at a recipe receiving level. For the best hops available online, give our friends at hopstraff.com a visit and pick up what you need for your next brew day. Also, get a pack of premium imperial yeast along with delicious recipes from us when you join the trout club. Again, go to patreon.com forward slash homebrew happy hour and come brew with us. On behalf of the absent Todd Burns, James Carlson, and the Pearl Media Network, I'm Joshua Steubing. Thanks for listening. <laughs>